We have uh, Congresswoman Nancy Mace uh, back with us. All right, um, you've ne you've now got two uh, members from the Palmetto State uh, running running for president. Uh, a third, Donald Trump, was very popular in South Carolina uh, for the primary as well. I thought Mo made a great point about Tim Scott being the one real threat to Democrats that he would be most worried about uh, for President Biden's reelect. Why do you think that is? Well, I think if you are a, a, a woman who's a Republican on the ticket or a black male Republican on the ticket, Democrats should be worried. In fact, both Nikki Haley and Tim Scott are both constituents of mine. And Donald Trump's state director is my former campaign manager, also in my district. And so, um, you know, we're churning out South Carolina, just coming out with all sorts of great leaders for our nation. If we don't recognize that in 2024, almost half the voters, 50 percent, are going to be Gen, Gen Z or millennials. And I don't think either side wants to see two 80-year-old guys going at it. We need younger leadership in our country. And, you know, both Nikki and Tim offer that to our in, in our Republican primary, too. I just, I just feel compelled, right, because I'm a television anchor, to have to then just press you a little bit harder, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, to, to pick a favorite. Oh, I'm not going to do that right okay, now. I'm, I'm keeping yeah, my power right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love all, both South Carolinians that are in right now. And as you all know, Nikki Haley was the only person to endorse me last year when I was running. And I ran, I, was, I would argue, the only Republican to beat Donald Trump in a primary, Republican primary last year. At the same time, I, I, I love Tim Scott, too. And I go to church with him. And uh, so I am watching the race and see how it unfolds. But I've been... Pretty, pretty upbeat and direct with voters that I want to see some diversity on the ticket. I'd love to see a woman on the ticket, for example. I'm a girl mom and I'm raising a daughter and a son. And I want to see more younger leadership either way on this ticket headed into 24, especially with half the electorate being Gen Z or millennial. Well, and I, and I love that you say that, and I love that you say that you want to see that diversity. But my question to you is we're almost at a point of fatigue where we see these two potential 80-year-old candidates. How does someone like Tim Scott shine and get his name out there? We, Like you said, I mean, we have seen it in the past, but he really has to break down some barriers between now and then. And how does he do that? Well, it's a lot of work. You've got Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. It takes money to be in the mix. And you've got to be able to raise money, number one, to be able to get out your message and have the time to go state by state and do the retail retail politics. I hope that there are a number of vigorous debates because I'll tell you, South Carolina, the leadership we have, both in Nikki and Tim, the way that they can maneuver on a debate stage will be fascinating for the nation to watch because they're both great. They're good orators, they know policy, they're substantive. Nikki comes to the table with international experience as a former UN ambassador. She comes with executive experience as well. And Tim is known as a fantastic orator. And so to see the two of those shine on the national stage is great for South Carolina. Congresswoman, what does it say to you about the Republican Party that there's multiple candidates who used to work in the Trump administration running against Trump himself? I mean, it's fascinating to me as a political scientist, but what do you think this means? Well, I'm not a consultant, but if you look at the numbers, 60 percent of Republican primary voters want somebody other than the former president. And you'll see, hopefully, you'll see a vigorous primary with debates. You'll see a, a bench with multiple candidates in it to determine if any one of those candidates can break through and take on the former president. Because I got to tell you, I'm kind of tired as a Republican. I'm tired of losing. I saw what happened in the midterms in 2022, and I want to see us win, not just the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. We've got to win the popular vote. And I've been trying to show a roadmap of how to do that, being pro-life, but also protecting women's rights. We've got to do that. We've got to address gun violence in this country without taking away Second Amendment rights. How do we do that? We've got to address the debt ceiling and spending, which, quite frankly, both sides have contributed to. Under Donald Trump, he added $8 trillion to the debt. And the President Biden, $4 trillion so far. Between the two of them, Republican and Democrats alike, that's $12 trillion over the last six years. New leadership is what needed in this country moving forward and moving into 2024. That's probably the only thing Republicans and Democrats, at least the voters, will agree on, is they want somebody other than the two 80-year-old men. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, 
unbiased coverage.